welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking all things spring 2024 trends and I'm so excited. Spring, well first of all, it's my birthday. Happy birthday to me, April 25th. Mark it down. Thank you. Spring for me is my favorite fashion season, which is kind of, you know, I've had a bit of a crisis about that recently because I was such a fall girl and now spring is just way more exciting to me. So let's just get started because I have a, I actually have like a ton of stuff on my list, which is kind of funny because at first I was like, oh my god, I don't really have that many things that I've been like seeing and then once I sat down to like actually think about it and, and look at some things that I've been like saving on Pinterest and Instagram or whatever I was like okay no I actually have like a lot to talk about so let's just get into it these are kind of a mix of like it's just like a nice mix of things that are probably like on trend reports versus things that I've just been like naturally seeing I think especially because I live in New York City it's kind of a unique perspective because people here are super fashion forward so I really like have a clear idea of like what's going on you know like New Yorkers are in the know so I always like to start out with the color and what I've been seeing a lot is baby blue and butter yellow. I don't think this is like extremely groundbreaking, like pastels for spring, florals for spring, groundbreaking. You know, I mean like we see pastels every single year and I feel like there's been a lot of like hubbub about pastel yellow, butter yellow. And I'm just kind of like, we've been doing pastels since literally forever. So I don't know, I guess it's just interesting because last year I feel like it was a lot of like pastel pink and this year the forefront is definitely on this kind of blue that's on my shirt, this like icy blue, baby blue. There's a cost bag that I want really bad. If you're like new here, I'm only buying five brand new pieces of items of clothing this year. And this cost bag, ever since I tried it on in store, I cannot stop thinking about it, but it's that same color. It's that nice pastel blue. I actually, so I don't have a car anymore, obviously, because I live in New York City. But before when I lived in Hawaii, I had my dream car and it was this gorgeous, gorgeous Subaru. And, and it was in this color and oh, I miss her. I miss her so much. She was so good to me. And then one more color that I feel like is more unique is cobalt blue, which I predicted in my 2024 trend predictions that cobalt blue was gonna have a moment. And I feel like this is a trend that I feel like I was like ahead of the curve on. Like uh, last year I was like ride or die for cobalt blue. And so very excited to see that. I think, like I said, it's like kind of this natural progression of the primary colors. You know, we've got butter yellow trending, but I think later this year's winter, we're gonna see bright yellow. So yeah, I don't know. Made, make sense from transitioning from like red, pop of red, like always being around to um, cobalt blue. Back to the blue, I've been seeing a lot of people do this color blue with, with red, kind of like my red nails right now in this shirt. I have been obsessed. I've been seeing a lot of like patterns and wallpaper and just like other things that aren't fashion. I pull a lot of inspiration for styling from like different stuff, like interior design, floral, like flower bouquets, like it's always kind of an interesting one to go to for uh, color options. And this baby sky blue and like a bright red, like an orange red. My nails, I usually get red always and they're a little bit more orange than usual but I, I don't know, I kind of like it. But yeah, I've been really loving pastel blue with a pop of red. I think that is going to be my kind of signature look for the spring. I thrifted a lot of this blue and I always have red nails so it's kind of like, well I don't always have red nails but when I have nails they're red so it's kind of a nice easy little trend to play up on. So the next thing I have on here is kind of a color, but it's, it's burgundy leather. And I've been seeing it a lot in burgundy leather jackets. I don't think burgundy, like a dark purpley red is really gonna trend in many other items except for this. So this is kind of like item specific. And I haven't seen this everywhere, which is so cool because this is like an easy thing to thrift, right? Like a burgundy leather jacket. And I've been seeing people pair it with you know, like pastel yellow a lot, which is an interesting choice. I don't really think that's my vibe, but I don't know. I guess it's just something that I wouldn't have thought to do. And so that's why it, f it like sticks out in my mind to me. But I've been seeing this burgundy leather jacket everywhere and it's kind of like a trench coat, but it's more cropped. So that's something that I've been noticing like uptick. I just thought that was interesting because it is kind of straying away from that typical spring palette where this feels more fall to me, right? Like this feels more like a fall item, but yeah, I've been seeing it everywhere for spring. The next thing I'm so excited for, and this is pinstripes and especially on pants and but even more on overalls. I've been trying to find a pair of vintage pinstripe overalls. I have a pair of vintage overalls. They're just like typical denim overalls, but the pinstripes is what makes this so unique. It's kind of like that railroad pinstripe, kind of like the pinstripes that my grandpa would like wear, you know, like I envision my grandpa like on a farm in like these overalls. I want those. <laughs> I'm very inspired by this. I think this is like the most spring thing ever. I think this is going to be the most trendy pattern or imagery for 2024 spring is the pinstripe but especially like I said a white and a blue it could be navy but it could be pastel blue I like the look of uh there's these free people pants that I oh, I love I've been trying to find vintage pants that are kind of in this same style and it's like next to impossible so I really love these pants even though they are 
um, you know, fast fashion, brand new. I, but I also at the same time have been seeing a lot of people do pink pinstripes, which is really cute. I also just think it's like kind of nice to have like almost like a uniform for each season. And I could see pinstripes being a really easy uniform. Throwing on just pinstripe overalls, like that is the outfit. We have a husky in our building. I never hear him. Like he, he's such a sweet angel boy. I've seen him before. He stares like directly into my soul with those crazy blue eyes. He is usually so like silent as a mouse, little boy. Little sweet boy, he is so loud right now. What's going on, boy? I'm gonna give my sweet husky the benefit of the doubt and say that that is not him. That's a different dog. He would never, he would never disrespect me like that. I just, yeah, I think they're, um, yeah, kind of a cool summer uniform. I like to kind of pick out statement pieces or not even, like they don't have to be statement pieces in the way that they're like loud and bold or colorful, just core pieces, I guess is a better word. I like to pick out like two or three core pieces per season that I wear to death. That's like my go-to because like I said in my last video, I get season fatigue. Halfway through the season, I need a mix up. I need, like I just lose the inspiration of that season. And so something like a pinstripe overall, I think would be an easy thing for me to still look cute, still look dressed up and not have to like think that much, but still being like into the spring fashion. The next I have is sailor inspired silhouettes. Kind of like this actually, I feel like this is giving a bit of sailor energy. I love this. There's one look in particular that sticks out to me from the Simone Rocha show, the, the Simone Rocha and Jean-Paul Gaultier. And it is this, I mean, I'll put it up on the screen because you really just see it. This hat, I loved. Like, this is the only thing that really stuck out to me. I, I am an enjoyer of like, hot couture, luxury, runway, fashion, but not like in a serious way. Nothing about me is in a serious way. I think we know that by now. So I'm like a casual watcher. Like, you know, I'll get on my stories and I'll critique the hell out of like the Oscar looks as if I know a single goddamn thing. <laughs> I tore them to shreds last night, but like I have strong opinions, but they're not rooted in any knowledge. Like I said, I didn't see all the looks, but this hat in particular, months later, I'm still thinking about it. This was so fun. It's got this very kind of like gimmicky look of a sailor hat. Love, love, love that the top has this like thick stitching and then the added of those like bow tassels. I'm also feeling like hints of like old money, hints of like, you know, spending your, your summer in the Hamptons. This kind of, you know, it's like quiet luxury gone kitschy, which I love. It's like quiet luxury gone 2012. This feels very 2012 to me. So I think there's kind of like two camps for this sailor inspired fashion is one is really on the nose, really doing those, you know, interesting, I don't know what they're called, flaps, are they called lapels? I don't know, the collars. <laughs> more of a square cut, more, you know, coming down further. Uh, so that'll be one camp, like sailor hats, you know, like high-waisted with the buttons, kind of like showgirl almost. I, I love that look, like the sailor, like showgirl, you know? Or it's gonna be more in like this quiet luxury way, like boat shoes, you know, like the Sperry's are coming back and kind of this like subtle, like, you know, a boat neck, linen, kind of like Coastal Grandma, but yeah, like more the Hamptons. I'm thinking more like J. Crew archival summer catalogs. I love both styles. I think I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. That's what I really love is I love kitschy, vintage, overdone, but I also love high quality, luxury, subtle, understated. And I'm kind of like a mix of both. The next thing I have, I just made up and I'm calling this Chanel core because <laughs> I've been seeing this is one thing that I saw um, on a lot of like trend lists that just come up on my Instagram page and whatever. And it was, everyone was calling these ladylike jackets or like ladylike, like ladylike. And it was all Jackie Kennedy-esque Chanel tweed blazer jackets. What are those called? I don't even know what those are called. I mean, this one from J. Crew is literally called J. Crew tweed lady jacket. So we're gonna see a lot of these, you know, big golden buttons, tweed, pastel colors with that like classic tweed that's kind of like a plaid almost. This feels very sophisticated and I think this is definitely like a micro trend. So I feel like this is, this is something that if you didn't think was cute five years ago, you shouldn't buy now. I've actually always loved these types of jackets. Um, I've thrifted a few in the past. I really like this silhouette. So for me, if I was to buy one, I think it would really match with my personal style. But yeah, for like the average person, if you just like are gonna buy this, but you like, yeah, ask yourself three years ago would I have thought this was ugly? And if the answer is yes, don't buy it. I know that these are gonna like, this like this one's kind of stresses me out because I know that everyone is gonna buy this. This is gonna be like the going out blazer. Okay, so 2008 to 2012, you know, recession time. Everybody's wearing their office looks to the club. Modern time period, I feel like we're all wearing blazers out, right? Like, and I've done it. I have some blazers that I'm like, oh, I can wear this to work. And then right after I can go get a drink with my friends and it's very cute. Like a blazer is effortless. It's like, 
cool girl. We're gonna see this, this ladylike jacket, and it's gonna be the thing, like wear out with your friends, you know? I fear that so many people are gonna like in a year be like, what the hell was I wearing? So this one I do think is gonna end up in thrift stores, like in the masses. So this trend I believe is gonna just in and out so fast. Also, oh God, have you ever gone into a fast fashion store and touched their, their tweed? Girl, it is paper thin and it's like $150. So if you must, definitely thrift this one because I just know that like Mango is gonna have a tweed jacket, yeah, for like $200 and you're gonna be able to hold it up to the light and see through it. Tweed should be like thick, like structured. So I don't know, this one was just very interesting to me, especially because I feel like Chanel's kind of been in their flop era. So to have this kind of classically Chanel silhouette trend is just interesting to me. I'm like one foot in, one foot out on this one. Okay, this next one is kind of like a concept and that is messiness. This one I like. I'm talking like messy makeup, messy hair, like kind of like just a thrown together frazzled outfit. I've been seeing this come back after the clean girl aesthetic, right? Clean girl, slick back hair, clean, glowing, beautiful skin makeup has been trending for so long. It was only a matter of time that we circled back to grunge. So I've been seeing people do this crazy mess see eyeliner just like thrown on eyeshadow with just glitter like haphazardly on love it like this is so fun to me i enjoy both aesthetics frankly i do understand the aesthetic of the clean girl and it's also something that you know i feel like i kind of try to go more simplistic these days oh, just a smudged out wing liner is so yummy natasha miss natasha denona is about to have an absolute heyday i think this was already kind of like creeping into the mainstream but i feel like the mason margella shoot where they did that like crazy makeup that was like shiny and messy kind of like solidified that for me that this was going to trend for spring and i like it i like that we're like sick of being put together you know there's just kind of this playful with makeup. I think we took a really long hiatus from makeup. I like that it is a concentration on makeup without needing so much time, right? So like 2016 when makeup was really, really more trendy and we would spend like an hour and a half on our makeup. This, it's like the makeup is the forefront, but it's like like done, right? <laughs> like it's fast. And so you can still have these really cool looks without as much time. And that's why I think I like it so much. All right, the next thing I have on here is cotton maxi slash mini skirts, especially white. I've been seeing this everywhere. I kind of started seeing it in the winter, like the little women winter was trending. And we're just gonna see those repurposed for spring. This might seem boring, but I find this one like just absolutely stunning because it's timeless. It's extremely timeless. It's also extremely easy to find secondhand. This to me, again, is a really nice uh, like uniform piece, you know? This is probably gonna be in my rotation. Like overall, a really nice cotton skirt and then some kind of like pop of color sweater. Probably my red cashmere sweater that I wear all the time. I'll probably still wear that a lot in the spring. There's just so much you can do with it and it's really easy. It's something that you don't have to think hard about to make stylish. Also, I've been seeing a lot of bloomers everywhere and I'm so obsessed. I, I, I need to find a pair of bloomers because, oh my God, Caroline Tucker, you absolute doll. On her Instagram story, she has been styling bloomers like a dream and I want a pair so bad. Like she has made me want a pair. They are so, so cute. Yeah, white skirts, white bloomers, just white bottoms in general. I think I think every year for spring we see white jeans and that's kind of like mm, rah, boring. So we're going towards like a cotton white skirt. Then I have drop waists. I love a drop waist. I have two dresses. They're actually the same exact style, but they're in navy blue and white. And I bought them last year when I was working at End of Their Stories, but they're from Koss. These dresses are so stunning and they have a drop waist. And I thought I wouldn't like a drop waist just because, I don't know. I just thought it would like hug me weird and give me an insecurity. I don't really have an insecurity about my stomach. I think when I was younger, I definitely used to. And now I just like could not be bothered to care. It really doesn't bother me anymore. I thought that a drop waist would maybe highlight my stomach in a way that I just would feel insecure about. I feel so good in those dresses. I feel so beautiful. Like I love myself in these dresses. So I'm very excited for the drop waist. Yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting silhouette because I think I think a lot of people have that same idea that a drop waist won't look good on them. And then I think when people finally discover the drop waist, they're like, wait a minute. Why does this look so amazing? So I would encourage you to definitely go try on a drop waist if you have never done so because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. This is also that we're, something that we're gonna see fall into summer. I like a lot of these trends because they are creating this bridge between spring and summer. I think, you know, my summer 2024 trend predictions is gonna be almost identical to this. I feel like a lot of the silhouettes that we're seeing now are actually made for summer and we're just going to throw a sweater on top. So a lot of my reference pictures might be, you might be like, that's 
like a summer outfit. And it's like, yeah, it is, but that's what we're wearing for spring. We're just like adding, you know, a jacket, a cute little, you know, cute little something on top. Next I have vintage boots and then also vintage in general. I've been seeing like a resurgence of vintage. I don't know, like I, I know people always have loved vintage and I know that there's people who have worn vintage for years, like myself included. I've kind of, I've got a mix. Like I really love vintage and I also love modern stuff. So again, I feel like with most, most things, I'm like kind of, in between. <laughs> but I've been seeing a lot more like mainstream influencers, influencers who do usually like Princess Polly hauls or like $600, what is $600 at Abercrombie get you? Um, I've been seeing those people turn to vintage, which is really cool. Always love to see that. Also, there's just, there's no shortage of vintage to go around. So I always encourage, you know, people to shop secondhand. I think there's like this notion that if more people get it, there'll be nothing left for us. And it's like, no, there's like so much in this world to be consumed, like we can share share the love, share the vintage, it'll be okay. You'll still find good stuff. I've been seeing a lot of people, obviously the fry boot, that's been a constant theme for the past like six months to a year. I think fry boots were extremely popular with people who love vintage, who know vintage, and now they're becoming a little bit more mainstream, right? Fry boots have been around, have been a thing forever, but recently I've seen just a ton of people really, really wanting a pair, myself included. But beyond just fry boots, I've seen like heeled boots, heeled riding boots, just all these really great vintage boots. I've also been seeing people really love vintage cowboy boots, which I love. They're always on Facebook Marketplace. Also, vintage cowboy boots are a really easy thing to buy at flea markets. They're usually around 50 bucks, which I think is very fair for leather shoes. So just vintage boots in all shapes and form. i very, very excited for this. And I've been seeing people pair, sorry, I'm like holding my comb. <laughs> I've been seeing people pairing uh, vintage boots with the cotton skirt, which is you know, I love that. The next thing I have is bubble skirt. This started to trend in the winter, but I think it makes more sense for spring. And this is like the good spring that I'm talking about. This is the type of silhouettes that I wanna see in spring. It feels like very whimsical almost. It's interesting. It looks like a flower. It looks like those like teacup flowers. You know what I mean? Those ones that like drape like this. That's what it, I don't know. It's just giving me an imagery of floral without being, outwardly floral. Wow, I kind of outdid myself there. That felt very astute. Like, mm, I had to do like an art analysis class. Maybe that's where this is coming from. You had to be like, using such imagery plays on the sadness that the artist felt as a child. Like it's, it was like that kind of, it, it was that kind of class, which I feel like I'm really good at that. I feel like I'm really good at writing like that, but it does feel dumb. But yes, the bubble, bubble skirt does feel, you know, it's got the imagery of a flower without outwardly saying, I'm a flower. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Love a bubble skirt. Super fun, super cute, super girly. And that's another thing that I saw trending is just girliness. And I don't even think that's necessarily a 2024 thing. Again, I feel like that's the same as pastels. It's just a spring thing. Every spring things get really girly, especially around Easter. Even as a kid, like I didn't grow up religious, but every year we like got an Easter outfit. Like my brother was in his little like purple plaid shirt and I'd be in like a white dress with like little purple flowers all over it. Um, so I think that that sentiment of like getting a really cutesy outfit is stems from Christianity. Look at that. Thank you, Jesus, for cute spring clothes. <laughs> It's always, at, it's always at this point in the video that I start to lose it. Cause in the beginning, it'll be pretty stale. I'm warming up, right? I'm getting comfortable, whatever. And then by this point, once I've been filming for like 35 minutes, I start making God jokes. Then we have rose appliques. We've been seeing that flower applique for a couple seasons now. Like I said, this spring, really, it's not a ton of stuff that is like brand new. It's kind of repeats of old seasons or, you know, it's kind of the same thing from last year, but we're getting even more specific. We've seen these flower appliques on everything or like the little corsages but especially I've been seeing rose everywhere. A rose in like the middle of a shirt holding it together. I've been seeing a lot of brands come out with rose scented perfumes. I think we're gonna see little roses on ballet flats. Like instead of a bow, it's gonna be a little rose. This feels very cute, very darling. Reformation has been doing these tops that I absolutely love. I, I, did, I did say last time that <laughs> Reformation is, I think, quote, the scam of the century, end quote. Listen, they still make cute stuff. Then I have peplum because of course, like I said, 2014 is coming around. I saw so many peplum silhouettes at the Oscars. Everyone had a freaking peplum and I didn't hate it. Yeah, I don't know. It's like this subtle peplum that we're seeing. It was like subtle and now it's full on peplum. We started with like just hints of a peplum. Now we're like in peplum territory, full on peplum. I also think this is gonna translate to bridal. I think the mermaid style is gonna come back in a big, big way. You know, you can always tell like when someone got engaged based on their wedding ring, right? Like there's just certain styles that really, tra guess mine. Well, I've got kind of a weird stacking right now. 
It's just a solitaire. She screams 2020. I love my, I love my ring. Like, love it. But we do see these styles kind of, you know, come up in bridal wear in rings. Uh, we saw a lot of like starbursts for a while or little like twirly things for a while and then solitaire. And then for bridal wear, we've been seeing a lot of like see-through lace for a while. And I think fishtail peplum, that trumpet bottom is gonna come back so big. Yeah, surprisingly, I don't hate it. I don't think I was ever really into peplums when they first came out. I feel like when peplums were popular, I was a little bit too young to kind of wear that style. They add just like a really interesting little layer of volume. I especially love a peplum with a skirt with like a bubble skirt underneath. Oh my god, like that's to die for because it's just like that extra little frilly layer. Next we have capris and like midi shorts. I'm talking like Bermuda shorts, but that are tailored. I want a pair like this so bad. I think it's really cute. I think it looks, you know, it looks exactly like a skirt, but you have the more functionality of shorts. I love when these are high-waisted, a really good A-line cut, and then belted. Oh my god, like that is so stunning to me. And capris were really pulling from, you know, the 1960s, a cute little capri with that little cutout at the bottom. So some capris and a ballet flat is gonna be, I think, a lot of people's go-to look. Also, it's so easy because like you can throw on a pair of capris, ballet flat, and a white t-shirt, and like that's the outfit. It looks so cute. So I'm very excited to see this one kind of come to fruition because I think people are still hooked on wide leg. Haven't been seeing too many people rock a capri yet. It's, you know, still these more, it's more bag or it's more um, those pinstripe pajama pants that people have been wearing in kind of like a casual way. Pretty soon, pretty soon. I think once it, you know, we get over this little winter hump, once we're like really into spring, that's when I think the capris are gonna come out. Cause you can't really wear them with like winter wear. Next I have rain boots, which again, isn't that groundbreaking, but I think rain boots in a way that is not purely for rain. <laughs> And I think really fun color rain boots. I think the Hunter rain boot in, you know, like a pastel yellow, pastel blue, uh, even like an army green. I think again, for every trend, there's like two ways I see it. And this is the two ways that I see the rain boot. It's either kind of that more traditional rich look, Princess Diana in the countryside, leaning up against the fence when she's got those like green rain boots on. So it's either gonna be that vibe where it's like rich woman goes hunting with her husband, but she doesn't actually go hunting. Neither does he, but he's just shooting clay pigeons and she's just leisuring, but she like wants to, she wants to dress up. She wants to dress up in costume and pretend that she's hunting. It's either gonna be that aesthetic, again, J. Crew archival, what dreams are made of, or it's gonna be Zoe De Chanel yellow rain boots with a matching yellow rain jacket, splash splash, red lipstick, like very, very cutesy. <laughs> very over the top twee. And I, you know what? I love both. And then back to what I was saying about uh, how spring is basically just dipping our toe into summer. We're gonna see a ton of straw. I've already been seeing this, a ton of straw or um, rattan, or what's the other one called? I can never remember. But those like organic straw looking materials, we're gonna see that a lot in bags and especially like a bucket bag. I've been seeing a lot of people do straw bucket bags with like leather trimming, but most of the bag is straw or vintage picnic bags, like little tiny, little tiny baskets. This also feels very 1960s kind of going into that capri so we have like again modern and vintage kind of takes on this style okay and that's that's everything that's everything that i think is going to trend for spring 2024 let me know what you think let me know what your favorite is what you're wearing this season i i am just over the moon excited for spring so really can't wait and yeah i just love talking about trends you can check out my instagram it's always linked down below it's michaela dixon underscore on instagram and tiktok i don't have a twitter so that's just you know twitter's boring twitter's for boring people <laughs> like this video and subscribe if you want to we're like crushing my goals over here thank you very much but that is it for me and i'll see you in my next one